Hi folks, Canadian Prepper here. So today on the channel, I wanna talk about the importance of getting in touch with your feminine side by doing things like arts and crafts. This is a, whoa, what was that? Take him, not me. Let me do it. Oh. Oh. Looks like they got the communist cameraman. Oh well. I wonder if the snowbank is protecting me from the bullets. Is that possible? You know what, that might make a great video topic. Hey guys, time out. I have a great idea for a video. Okay, so the question is, why the hell would we wanna know how bulletproof snow is? Well, I can think of a lot of scenarios, especially if you're you know, a person who's in the military and you do any work in the military in a northern climate, it would be nice to know how much snow could provide you some protection. Okay, now if we're talking about preparedness, if things go really bad, Mad Max style, and we find ourselves in a winter wonderland wasteland, then I would wanna know, you know, can this big mound of snow in front of me actually give me some protection? So this snow that we have in these buckets here, how we're gonna do this is we're gonna pack the snow in there pretty good. This is pretty heavy, okay? I would say it's about 60 to 65% of the weight this would be if this was full of water. You gotta do this quick. This is pretty well packed. It's probably at least a quarter the density as water, if not more than that. But we're gonna say a quarter just to be conservative about it. If you see a natural mound of snow, it's gonna be more dense in the bottom in the same way that water is actually more dense and high pressure when you go down to lower depths because of course the water on top is packing it down. All right guys, so we're gonna be shooting a Winchester Magnum Rimfire, a 22 caliber out of this Chiapa survival over under rifle 20 gauge shotgun on top and it has a winchester magnum 22 rimfire on the bottom so we're gonna try the 22 just for now i actually shoot jimmy hendrix style so you'll see that i'm shooting ambidextrously because i'm not worried about accuracy i'm not right eye dominant so i'm just going to shoot in this right-handed configuration for this time there we go <laughs> all right let's see did it make it past Door number one. Looks like it did. Absolutely did. Did it make it past door number two? Doesn't look like it did. Okay. Let me just see door number three. No. So we're gonna try that test again. So the first one we tried, it went past number one, but it didn't penetrate two. So that means we only got about a foot and a half of penetration, we think. We're gonna try it again just to make sure the bullet wasn't deflected or something like that. So this time I'm actually gonna put down my eyes. This is called uh, Canadian eye protection. The best in ballistic protection. All right, we definitely got penetration on number one. It's not a surprise. Let's see if we got penetration on number two. No penetration on number two. So our 22 Winchester Magnum was able to make it about this far into the snow. Now Winchester Magnum round has a bit more power than a standard 22. So I'm assuming that a standard 22 is gonna perform roughly the same. And we only had about, as you can see, about a foot of snow before it had to go through the cardboard. Now I'm not sure how much the cardboard is playing into this. I'm gonna guess that it's not that much but you just never know with ballistics. These guns will really suck the heat right out of your hands. And for all you guys saying, hey, wear your gloves. When you do video shoots like this, you have to bring out so much stuff. And of course, I forgot to bring out my finger gloves. All right, so now we're gonna try the 5.56 and a 55 grade full metal jacket out of this Tavor X95. Let's check it out. As you can see there, that caused a lot more destruction. We got a huge fissure in the snow. I think we all know it went through one, so we're not even gonna bother looking at that. Didn't go through two. That's weird. 
I do see an exit wound, sort of, it looks like it. How did that not go through there? Nothing on three either. So I'm gonna presume that it may, it may have not penetrated the two. I'd be very surprised if it didn't, but if you can see in here, you can see in that crack, there's no bullet. So that bullet has to be in here somewhere. We're gonna have to look for that bullet. We're gonna have to dismantle this sucker. All right, let's see if we can find the bullets here. It's like finding a needle in a haystack. Doesn't help that we got some sticks in here that kind of look like it. Let's move this whole thing. Cause you can see it didn't penetrate here. So we know that it didn't go past number two, which is pretty impressive that a 5.56 couldn't get through that. It's like panning for gold. If you guys are wondering, these are coyote mitts that you can get from canadianpreparedness.com. It's the warmest pair of mitt you will ever wear. Getting kind of impatient. Well, where the hell is it? I cannot find you guys. I think we're gonna have to run the experiment again. I just don't believe it. I can't believe that only that much snow will stop a 5.56 round. That's incredible, if that's true. Okay guys, so we tried to find the bullets, the 22 and the 5.56, couldn't find them. So we're gonna try to do the test again. We're pretty sure that it didn't go past level two, which is about two and a half to three feet. So let's try it again. This time for round two, as you can see, we've widened the targets a little bit, just in case the bullet deflects. Huh. Let's send one more. Let's see where she fell. Came in a little low. This rifle is sighted out for a much longer distance. So let's see what happened here. So we definitely went through number one and you can see they both went through right there. We definitely had penetration on two that time. We had penetration on two, but it looked like it started to get pretty weak by that point. You know what? I think only one of the bullets went through two. As for three, not even close, nothing on three. So it looks as though one of the bullets just barely, you can see how far it ripped through the first one and you could see how pathetically it just barely got through the second one which means that it didn't have much power by the time it came to this point. I kind of don't want to take it down because then we're gonna have to set it all up again so we're just gonna start shooting shotgun slugs at it and see what happens. All right so now we're gonna try a slightly larger caliber. This is a three inch rifled slug out of a 12 gauge shotgun. Let's see what happens. Well, <laughs> as expected. So as you can see, it uh, totally destroyed the first target. We know it went through the second because if you look on this side here, it's actually indented a bit. So let's see the first one. That would hurt. Something pushed in here, but I don't know. Well, yeah, it did go through. So you can see the hole's a lot smaller there, mind you, where it started. So I'm guessing it's probably in here somewhere. I wanna, let's just check three and see where. And it did not go through three. Oh, it actually went through three. I'm surprised. Let's see if it went through four. Whoa. It actually went through four. I guess all it took was a three inch shotgun slug. Did it go through five? Oh, just barely. Something happened on five. Do you think that's a bullet dent or is that just a... It's hard to say. I think, I think, wow. Unless it's right there at the end, which that would be very strange if it was. So this is how far the shotgun shell made it. And uh, I'm pretty sure I found it. So we're gonna try to dig it out right now. Oh yeah, I see it. See it there. The slug is almost perfectly intact. I would say 
probably about seven feet it made it. So this little dent that it made in there, that actually wasn't from the bullet because the bullet only made it to here. So the bullet actually pushed snow into it. So the bullet never actually made contact with the five. But uh, so it's kind of interesting how it did that. So based on our tests, I didn't expect this to happen, but the shotgun with the rifled slug three inch was able to make it all the way to level five. But based on two tests that we did, for some reason, the 5.56 only made it a few feet. So I know the shotgun is obviously more powerful. I would have expected the ballistics of the 5.56 to allow it to penetrate a little bit further, but I guess I was mistaken. So hiding from shotgun slugs in snow, you're gonna need a lot of protection. Okay, so the 22 WMR made it about one to two feet. The 5.56, based on two of our tests, made it somewhere, I would say, if I was to be generous, about four feet, but I think that's being generous somewhere between three and four feet. And the shotgun slug, it appears made it a little over seven feet into the snow. So now we're gonna try the absolute number one choice of the zombie apocalypse, for me anyways, double odd buckshot. All right, let's check it out. So you guys can see why we saved the buckshot for last. Because setting up these snow targets is a real pain in the butt. Doesn't look like anything made it past three, which I didn't expect it to, but we definitely got some penetration on two. We got about, we got one, two, three, four, five. I often hear people say, you still need to be really accurate with a shotgun. Well, Look at that spread just from a few feet away. So yes, you do have to be accurate, but you don't have to be that accurate either. And there's another one right there. So I'm guessing that those pellets are in here somewhere. I don't know if I really want to go digging for them to be honest. Oh, we found one. So this pellet was found right there. So snow will provide that amount of bulletproofing from double odd buckshot. I'd say it was packed fairly considerably but nothing that would be out of the ordinary in nature. It's not like we poured water on this. It's not like it was very slushy out or there was a lot of water to make it more dense. So I'm pretty impressed by that anyways. Now, if we were to pour water on this and come back tomorrow, I'm pretty confident that would make it a lot stronger. You know, as a means of makeshift bulletproofing, is it gonna work as good as a sandbag? Probably not, but it's gonna provide some protection but I think we would have to do more in-depth testing in a more controlled environment in order to really ascertain how effective snow is against firearms of various calibers. But I think we've shown here today that it will provide you with some protection. Whether or not that information is at all useful, I don't know. I just thought it was a pretty cool experiment to do. If you guys have any ideas for how we can rerun this experiment in a way which is slightly more controlled, let us know and we'll do it. We do plan on doing an ice test in the not so distant future because I have an ice sculptor who's gonna be doing some videos with us in the future showing us how you can use ice for survival purposes. So stick around. Thanks for watching guys, Canadian Prepper Up. The best way to support this channel is to support yourself by gearing up at canadianpreparedness.com where you'll find high quality survival gear at the best prices, no junk and no gimmicks.